Hi, hi. Hello. Feeling a bit silly today. Hello. Got the got the Friday sillies. Uh, yeah, I'm feeling a bit silly today too. This I'm could go anywhere. Like I have one brain cell just <laughs> holding me up. Thank you, thesis writing and assignments. Love it. Yeah. Well, I've just been doing my thesis just now. So if I sound out of my mind, it's because I am. <laughs> that's, that's, there's a reason for that. Good. Okay, good. Well, we'll go thesis a little one, light. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's go a little more lighthearted today then. Yeah, I feel like after the last couple of episodes as well, I think we're due for just a chill, silly sesh. Yeah, let's just, yeah, that's, <laughs> pro- that's probably a good idea. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Have you been doing your thesis? Not today, no. My plan is to uh, continue after this, plan <laughs> being the key word there. What, what are you even up to? With the whole process? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> um. Super, super far along. It's pretty much finished. Um, it's gonna be awesome. Oh yeah. No, I have barely made a dent in the whole thing, which is concerning because mm-hmm. it's due in what three and a half weeks or something. Um. Yes. Yeah, I've I've managed to compile all of my studies, so that's good, and yeah. done like mini summaries of each one, and then it sucks because you realise like I had a stack of like a hundred to start with, and I've ended up with like twenty eight or something. And that's just so people know, like you sift through so much crap mm. and you and you very quickly realize what good studies are and what crap studies are as well as you're going through this. And you're looking yeah. at some of the stuff that gets published. It's like, how on earth did this get published? Honestly, this is horrid. But anyway, it's um, just part to, of the course. Just to clarify, our thesis is a systematic review. So for those who don't know what systematic reviews are, is essentially we pick a topic and we sift through all research, <laughs> all research that has anything anything to do with our um, the things that we look the variables that we're looking at, and we pretty much pick out things that will answer our certain research question. So it's not like we're doing an experiment, like we did an honors. Yeah, well, so I, I, th- we, anyway. I don't even know if technically we call it a thesis. Really, it's it's just it's a systematic review. You know, let's just if we're going to be technical about it, it feels like a mm-hmm. thesis <clears throat> because it's massive. Like it's ridiculous how much work has gone into this thing over the last two years already, um, and this is this is crunch time. So yeah, fingers crossed it actually produces something half decent that people might actually be oh. interested in. Fingers crossed. Yeah, I mean. Only time will tell, especially um, with the whole process, the new process that we're using. So anyway. Yeah, we will shift. So what do you want to hit it off with? I I have thought, just so people can take something out of today's episode rather than us just having a bit of a gas bag, if we if we discuss some of our favorite books that we've read thus far, don't necessarily have to be like psych heavy. Or, you know, like in the self-help realm, because I'm not a huge fan of that. I've been through most of those. And actually, you know, I want to talk about that first. Actually, let's, I'm, I'm getting up more high horse. This is me climbing onto the largest horse ever to complain about this. Because self-help, unreal, love it. Gurus, love them. Well, not really. Yeah. But if you are going to produce some information that's like, do this thing and you'll feel great about it. One of the things that I hate that is never spoken about, well, sorry, never's not right, not spoken about enough is the snapback effect from when you stop doing the thing. So it, let's let's use cold showers as an example, right? Because we know the cold showers are awesome. But if you're doing, and we mm-hmm. had a post about that recently, which was great. The yeah. reason that I have a problem with the self-help stuff is there's an underlying level of guilt or shame or like you can't do the thing if you stop doing it. So it's like, I'm going to do cold showers for a month. And then two weeks in, you're like, this sucks. I'm having a hot shower. There's this feeling of like failure or something. Like you haven't you haven't done what you set out yeah. to achieve. And you actually feel worse. That happens mm-hmm. across the board with self help books. I've read I've read a bunch yeah. of, them. and and it's always like it's always so motivating to be like, yes, let's do the thing. And then the second that it drops off, you're like, ah, oh, 
can't even do that, right? And then you actually, you almost exactly. end up like worse off than before you started. Yeah, because uh, the post I put up yesterday about driver motivation and how you get motivated by watching uh, an Instagram reel of a motivational speaker or, like you said, a book, and you're like, yep, I'm going to change my life. Let's do it. <laughs> and you go do the thing one time, two times, and then you drop off and you're like, oh, your dopamine decreases and you're back to square one. And then you feel even worse than what you did before because you can't hold, you know, do the thing for a long period of time. And that's where I guess working with someone helps. Yeah. I think the other, the other side of that too, that I've, I've noticed it, it is getting better because people are starting to take the piss out of it is like this morning routine thing that, that seems to be just doing the rounds of everyone on socials, right? Like I get up at four o'clock and I have a cold shower and then I meditate for 20 minutes and then I write my goals and da 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 da, da. Like the list is freaking endless. And mm -hmm. I'm sure there are people out there that do that every morning. That's great. But for those people that don't do that, you might, you feel like, I don't know, you're behind or you 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 should be doing it, but you're not and therefore, you know, you're lesser or whatever. Like there's all these like negative feelings that are associated with it. Do you have a routine? Like, do you have a specific morning routine yourself? I wouldn't say I have a specific routine, but I always have stuff in the morning that get, gets me up early. So my routine depends on what I'm doing throughout the day. And, you know, because I have clients at 6 a.m. in the morning for personal training. So I wake up 5.30 and it's often other people getting me up. Um, if I got uni and work, uh, throughout the day and I have lots to study to do, I will wake up at five 30 cause I need to get to the gym at six to train myself cause I don't have time. So it's more, it's more, uh, time management rather than having like a specific routine. Yeah. Yeah. I like, see, I like that though. Right. Cause then it's like, if you haven't got PT clients, you could like, you would just sleep in, right? Well, the, for, for instance, this week, cause I finished my last placement last week. So I've just been focusing on studying this whole week. I've kind of allowed myself to up at seven, you know, lay in bed for a little bit. Then I'll get up, um, shower, have breakfast and go for a walk and then study. And it's a lot more like, oh, like I know how busy my schedule usually is. And this is probably the one week I'll get off for a very long time. So I may as well just do whatever. And that's also self-care, like not having a routine and kind of just allowing it to be whatever because I am so punctual and like structured throughout my life. So there's different ways of looking at it, I guess. I suppose, it's, yeah, I suppose it's like, like the conscious effort in I'm not going to do all of the things today or whatever it might be. It's like that conscious decision to do yeah. whatever that might be. I'm not going to do the 50 things on I my like pre-work routine that are like supposed to be mm -hmm. awesome. Uh, I'm just going to... Exactly. Yeah. I'm always on the go. I'm always on the go. So when I do get time to just, you know, go with the flow in terms of routine, I'll take it because I know it doesn't happen very often. And once I like strive for something, I don't stop. So it's actually good at times to just set back a little bit and slow down, even though it's a bit weird and um, you might feel different feelings during it as well because you're like, whoa, I have more time to think. That's great. Oh. Um, <laughs> just let yourself kind of um, sit with that as well is, is pretty healthy, I think. Yeah, I like that. Good advice for anyone listening. Take what about it. you? Do you have a routine? Nah, nah, not at all. I, but I'm, I'm very, I'm very like, I've, I've sort of always been a bit this way. It's like, almost anti-establishment so if it's like if it's the cool thing to do then i'm probably gonna go against the grain on it because i'm just mm -hmm. i'm just annoying like that so something like a morning routine like if they're like have a cold shower and get up early i'm like you know what i'm gonna get up with no alarm and i'm gonna have a hot shower because fuck you <laughs> right? there's no there's no reason for it i just just say i run but no 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 morning routine really other like i always have to eat that's that was like my big thing. Like, I don't know how people fast. Um, obviously, it works for some people. You know, even like if you've got a medical condition or something, then of course, that's what you need to do. But yep. people doing it because they think it's cool. Um, yeah, I don't know about that. Like your brain your brain is fueled by 
by your food. So, you know, things like your hydration and food are kind of important. So eat first thing in the morning. But um, yeah, that, that'd be it. That'd be my one thing. Eat and coffee. Just make sure you eat. Yeah. That's it. Get That's my routine. Get some food, get some coffee. Yeah. I'm sorted. Well, what do you think about like, obviously some people trying to stick to a routine or um, trying to whatever the behavior they want to do. And then they kind of fall off during the week and they're like, I'll start again next week. And they, they wait till Monday to start again. What do you think about that? Ah, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure there's, there's a, like specific phrasing for doing exactly that. I don't know what it is. I, I, yeah, I, I can see the appeal and I've, I've been guilty of it in the past as well. So, you know, it's a Wednesday or a Thursday. I'm like, you know what? When Monday rolls around, I'm going to get serious. I'm going to get serious on Monday. Yeah. And then like sure enough, Monday rolls around you. and it's, you know, the whole thing's a disaster. Uh, there, I'd, I'd probably be asking like, why is there, why can't you do a first thing tomorrow? Like, why can't we start right now? Like, what is the thing that's holding you back? Because the new week doesn't mean anything. Why yeah. can't we start tomorrow? Why have you had experience with it? It's this? a mental thing though, isn't it? It's such a mental thing. It's like, oh, fresh start is Monday. Fresh start. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think the idea of a fresh start is more appealing than the fresh start itself. Yeah. I think we've, I think we get ourselves into those traps a lot, actually, it's just as humans, because it's like, I'm going to have this fresh start or this breakaway. And then the, the actual thing happens and you're like, oh, this is just the same as what it was before. But now I've got like more pressure on me to do the thing. Yeah. Probably a, a real line of expectations is always a good idea too before a fresh start. Because it's like, where's, yeah. where are your goals set and how specific are they? Because if you've got some arbitrary broad goal of like, I'm going to do all these things and I'm going to do it on Monday. Damn, like that's a lot <laughs> of pressure come Monday. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I know. Well, it, it's not too, well, it might be, but I don't believe it's too sustainable in the long term um, because like progress ebbs and flows all the time throughout the week. You can't be perfect, but the ability to pick yourself up and keep going the next day, even if you had like, even if you didn't do the thing today you're like okay let's go tomorrow like it's fine that's just about being human you're not gonna be like monday to sunday perfect all the time (laughs) yep yeah that's my belief anyway i agree (laughs) i agree with your belief (laughs) i'm glad someone does oh good that went that went a little detour there i liked it Anyway, what book are you gonna first like, show I've, us? I've got my I've got my stack of books just screaming at me like Nick, show us. I'm intrigued. Talk about it. Where should we start? I've got I've got a few. I've probably got four for today that I think would be helpful, if not interesting for people that are interested in psych and just human behavior and stuff. So I yeah. might start I might start easy and then we'll go a little more techy as we go through. Have you got any that you want to go through today? I did have a couple, but I don't have them with me, but I can do like a quick little, um, I'm sure some people have already heard of them before. So cool. yeah. Well, we can put, first, though, because Matt, I have them with you. what if we put the, like, we'll put the list of them in the show notes or something if people want to. Yeah. So they don't have to yeah. we'll <laughs> listen and write it down or whatever. Yeah, exactly. We'll link them. Okay. Book number one, Think Again by Adam Grant. I I have to admit when I first saw Adam, because I follow Adam Grant on LinkedIn and I've seen him around the place before. Adam Grant is probably yeah, the most well-known org psych in the world. He has awesome stuff. I have to admit though, when org- I first... Organizational. Organizational psych. Yep. Sorry. When, yeah, <laughs> just, just to be very, very clear about that. Organizational psych. Uh, when I first started seeing his staff, I had the biggest chip on my shoulder because he... He uses, I suppose, what you would call a reductionist model in synthesizing quite complex things down into bite-sized pieces that general population can actually understand and apply in their own lives. And he did it so well that there was like this like academic superiority part of me that was like, you can't do that, man. Like we've got to be, you know, we've got to be all the details and make sure we're not skipping things. And yeah, like what we're taught all the way through uni, right? But then I, I was like, you know what? I'm going to challenge my biases. I'm going to read this book. This thing was unreal. It was like, I, I couldn't put it down. It was, it was one of those annoying ones where 
because I, li- I like to read at night time. Um, if I'm mm-hmm. ever reading during the day, it's like a red flag for me. I'm like, dude, what the hell are you doing? I was reading this thing during <laughs> the day. Flag. It was it's my red flag. I'm like, man, what are you trying to, you're avoiding something. What's going on? You. I just wanted to read this because it was good. So Think Again by Adam Grant, number one on my list. Very easy read too. What was it about? It's essentially, it's challenging biases in thinking, but he does it, the way that he writes about it is in, it's such an such an eloquent way that he that he phrases things. And he has little drawings and, and models and things that you can copy as well. But, you know, he like talks about, and, and there's, it's all backed by research and things as well, which he mentions throughout the book too. So he does refer to the research, but there's things like, uh, you know, like the armchair critic and things like that. Like what? Like where does the armchair critic come from? Which is essentially like very relevant for sports, right? How many people do we know ourselves? Probably guilty of it at times, where we're watching footy or something, and just and just throwing opinions at the TV about what they should be doing, and like we kind of act like we know everything. Oh, yeah, Backseat we all know drivers. someone like that. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Backseat drivers. You know, it's things like that where he he sort of challenges your thinking on that, but then also helps you to understand why that's even a thing. So. And there's heaps and heaps of different examples of that. Anyway, number one on my list. Very, very good. I get people to read that for sure. Lovely. Do you want to tag in and out on this? Yeah. So the book that I recently read, which was actually a gift from one of my best friends, Al, thank you. Shout out. Um, <laughs> it's called Ikigai, the Japanese book of happiness. Yes. It's a very sweet book. So... In this book, it's a very easy read as well, very light, which is nice, very positive. So it helps you become more positive from within and it kind of helps you feel at peace with yourself uh, and your life and it enables you to focus on your peace of mind and will to live. It just gives you like a background of the Japanese lifestyle um, Mm. and it gives you some tips and tricks and I guess what they eat and their cultural beliefs and um, what type of exercise they do and yeah, it's just a really nice light book. That so is just... it is it actually because I know like I know the concept itself, but is the book like practical in its information yeah. or is it more just like this okay. is what they do? So try it. It's half 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 half. Okay. So you know, give a lot of background and talk you through some things. And then um, I think either halfway or three quarters through, then it gives you like some tips and practical ways of implementing it into your own life. Damn nice. I might actually yeah. have to read it. I think an old, an old client of mine yeah, who is like probably the, the biggest big dog I've ever met in my life to date. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. He actually introduced that concept to me back, back then. And I thought oh, that was, Sounds all a bit fluffy for me, but um, because things like inner peace and things like that, I just associate that with meditation and mindfulness and all that sort of stuff as well. And then maybe me, I just have like this adverse response to it. I'm like, Ugh, that's a, that's a bit fluffy. Like, where's the where's right. the meat? But well, the is concept it- is like the secret to to a long and happy life. Um, it's like what you love, what the world needs what you can be paid for and what you're good at and they all intertwine together yeah okay yeah so the extra the extra parts about i suppose like longevity and and living a healthy life and things like that they're just more sort of around that from a japanese perspective yeah nice what's it called again it's, for a, it's a different perspective ikigai so i'll put it down below but it's i-k-i-g-a-i awesome it's a little blue book nice Light read. Well, light read. speaking speaking of reads that are not so light, uh, a little mm. more dense. This one, this one's also like semi controversial too. I don't. It depends. It sort of depends what circles people are in. But I, I honestly rate this as one of the most interesting books I've ever read, which is mm-hmm. the Forty Eight Laws of Power by Robert Greene. This thing is. It's doing, the, it's doing the rounds online. It has been for a while in in all of those like Sigma circles, you know, all that stuff. Like mm. you've seen all that, like Sigma, Alpha, Beta, Male, all that kind of crap. 
which yeah. a lot of it is such garbage. But this, there's a lot of people out there that that are making this book out to be something that is not, which is like some sort of dark arts, Harry Potter style, you know, like Bible on how to be evil. It's it's not that at all. Um, well, that's my interpretation anyway. <laughs> it's but it definitely <laughs> outlines and highlights the complexity of human interactions and relationships and and the best and worst of of humankind i suppose very interesting if people want to understand relationship dynamics on a deeper level so especially in a workplace context i found a lot of the things in here were very applicable in a professional setting uh so mm -hmm. if people feel like they might need to get a bit more of an understanding about you know maybe there's that person at work that they feel a little bit kind of uneasy around or things like that I would recommend that you have a flick through this book because there's probably something in here that you're going to resonate with and think, actually, yeah, you know what? That's quite helpful. Part of it is that Robert gives you actual sort of practical insights on how to deal with some of these more complex individuals. So if you have, which I hear a lot from people, is like, I've got a narcissistic boss. There is literally <laughs> like basically step-by-step -step instructions in here on how to cope with a narcissistic boss right or a bully and, and all sorts of stuff like that so very very interesting one that is definitely not as evil and nasty as it as it's made out to be online so so is that like kind of like how to i guess respond to people to certain different types of people to protect yourself in that way or no yeah so there's there's a lot of that in there but it's it's called a lot of the time it's phrased as manipulation or like manipulative stuff. So like for example, the first law in the book is never outshine the master, and then they'll run mm -hmm. through a historical story about about someone who outshone the master, and then there was some sort of adverse consequence, and then he kind of goes into what you should do in that instance and why you should avoid it, and then there's also a counter to that as well. So it's like it's it's quite insightful, yeah. but you can imagine in a workplace setting there would absolutely be people that have a boss or their boss's boss or whoever it might be that never ever wants to be seen to be outshone. And so knowing something mm -hmm. like that is a very handy thing to implement if you're in that situation. The boss is maybe yeah. nasty, a little egotistical. You know, that's that's something to go, oh yeah, cool. All right, I might actually take, take some of that on board and then apply that so I can avoid any negative consequences on the other side. Little yeah, little things like that. And like that. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. That's a cool mm. concept, actually. Yeah, I love I love the way that he that he's written his books. Um, there's another one too that I might run through another time, but it's it's huge. It's very thick. <laughs> this one's this one's yeah, slightly easier to, to get through. You might have to um, let me borrow that book. Sounds pretty cool. Done. Especially like human behavior and stuff. I'm, I really love all that stuff. And kind of how to interact with people like that. Um, the other book I was gonna talk about was The Body Keeps Score. Oh yeah. So not sure if you heard about this book, but this is essentially the Bible of trauma. <laughs> um, what trauma is, um, the different types of trauma and certain interventions that may help, I guess victims of trauma By so Bessel. it is a very what's heavy his last name again uh Bessel a van der Kolt. that's right <laughs> and I would say this is like the bible I would recommend it to people who want to learn a lot more about their trauma um it can be triggering but there's lots of techniques that um that they talk about that therapists use to help people yeah I was gonna say because I remember reading like through that. that and it was quite heavy at points uh, and that's mm -hmm. that's even like that's saying it's heavy as someone who's heard some horrendous things from clients. Yeah. Um, and it was, and I still found it heavy. So, um, yeah, forewarning for anyone that is going to have a crack at it, it's like there will be points where you're uncomfortable with the content, and yeah. that's okay. Just take it bit it, by bit. It's not. It's yeah. It's not one you want to like smash out. But if you're really interested in whether you're like a psychologist yourself or wanting to be a psychologist or if you're just wanting to understand yourself a lot better and you're not afraid to kind of go dig deep, then, yeah, it's great. It's a great book to kind of smash out slowly, but it's very informative and, and yeah, I love it. It's a really good one. 
Yeah, nice. All right. On to, on to my boy, Mr. Is Carl this, Jung. Uh, is this the lucky last? <laughs> <laughs> this, this is lucky last for today, so we don't overload. This, this one here, I don't even know if you can find this anywhere, but it's the essential Jung. It's basically just like a compilation of some of his writings. I've got his other stuff as well. Like I've basically got his whole collection, but that was just a nice compilation. For anyone that hasn't read or heard of Carl Jung, he came up with so many of the concepts that we just use every day, like persona, for example. That's one. The shadow self, things like that. Anima, anima, so that sort of feminine, masculine stuff that you see the gurus jumping on board a lot now and and sort of pushing out there as well. You know, masculine energy and feminine energy, it, yes. it's, it's sort of taken from him. One of the things that he did that I think has been insanely helpful for a lot of my clients, especially my male clients, Actually, and no female clients for that matter too, is is the concept of the shadow self, which is something that when you try to explain it to people, they, they can take it the wrong way because it's essentially like these are all the parts of yourself that you want to ignore. They're all the parts of yourself mm-hmm. that you don't want to, you don't want the world to know about. So you sort of smother them all down. Mm-hmm. But the theory is essentially they are going to let themselves be known one way or another. They're going to come out at some point. Mm-hmm. And Robert Greene yep. talks about this a bit as well. So there's a bit of sort of crossover, but it's like if you're in the workplace and you're trying to act a certain way and be polite and social and do all the things that go against your your sort of normal functioning, what's what's in the system, every now and then the shadow self is going to emerge and it might be like a nasty sort of bite back or a look or whatever it is. They're things that we then say, we need to we need to address those and make those known. So rather than trying to hide them and suppress them, Let's shine a light on them all and vo- and face them voluntarily, right? Come out of the shadows and we'll just see what's up. And it's quite confronting because a lot of it is not what, you know, is socially acceptable and things like that. So I would recommend doing it. Is that it. like holding a mirror at yourself? <laughs> a little bit, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Imagine all of the worst parts of yourself that you think are the worst parts of yourself and all of a sudden you just go, oh, there they all are, laid out on a table. It can be quite confronting. Well, generally, yeah, definitely confronting but I feel like it would be more confronting when it uh, affects someone else rather than yourself. Yep. That's when people start, I guess, making changes when people around them can start seeing. Yeah. And if you don't know that they're, that they're there and that they're a thing, that can be hard to then have exposed in a way because you think, oh my God, like that, that's actually me. Like I actually did that really mean thing. I, like I, I didn't mean to, it just, it just sort of came out of me, right? You know, you hear that. I just sort of came out of nowhere. Well, you don't know until someone kind of tells you, pulls you up. Usually the closest one. It's a bit, it's a bit oof. So for actually part of that, this will make sense. For those that can see what is over my shoulder, this painting, this horrifying painting, which I love so much. I had this commissioned uh, when I, after I first got registered and the artist, absolute legend, told me i won't say his name because he actually doesn't want to be known he doesn't want to do it i asked him to paint me jung's representation of the shadow i basically gave him free reign i was like i want something that represents the shadow self he came back to me with this and i was so stoked on it i hung it up on the wall for a little while luckily you can't you can't uh... quite see from i don't know how clear it is but it basically doesn't really have any eyes or a mouth and stuff it's like it's pretty creepy. Yeah, so those who can't see right now, it's like a woman wearing this white like dress. It looks like it's from like the eighteen hundreds or something. It's like a where frill- I'm yeah, it's like anyway. a frilled neck kind of lacy. Yeah, thing. yeah. She's white. She's got her hair up in a bun. You can't see an eyes or mouth, and the background's completely black. So it looks like a ghost in the yeah. darkness. Yeah, it's I I love it so much. Way- Ash, Ash, my fiance hates it. She's like, we got, we got to move it. It's it always in the crazy. background when I'm on work meetings and stuff. And I was like, no, no, it's fine. Um, we've named her Gladys, just to yeah. kind of humanize her a little bit. So, yeah. <laughs> if if Gladys, you think we need a name change, we're yeah. open to it. Um, but essentially, <laughs> if you're if you're at night and you see that, I'd be pretty scared. It looks like the nun, kind of, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's very much like that. <laughs> I, I said to Ash the other day. You know, the face used to look the other way, right? <laughs> She's like, stop it. Yeah. No. It was, <laughs> it was probably in bad stop. taste. But stop. 
anyway, it's it's the representation of the shadow self. So that's sort of where you can understand the the dark aspects of of that concept, which um, as you can probably also tell, I love. Yeah, you, you do love your darkness. Yeah, it's good. Shine some light on it. I <laughs> see what's ahead. That's a cool. That's a cool concept and a cool book. So another one I have to check out. If people are going to look at Jung's uh, writings, I would recommend like start super small with some of the like compiled stuff online. Be very careful though with online stuff because people take his concepts and just skew the crap out of them and do all sorts of stuff with them. So like the Myers-Briggs and things like that, like introversion and extroversion, mm-hmm. all that crap, like his actual explanation of things like that go into so much depth that we've as as society now we're like are you introverted or extroverted it's like well yeah, shit, yeah. Like it's way it's way more complex than that like but it's, it's so a good place great. to start so mm-hmm. start start somewhere like that and then we just kind of go down the rabbit hole would be my recommendation well that's good thanks for those recommendations i'll, I'll need to check them out once uni is done and i have time and energy yeah. to read <laughs> and brain capacity yeah i know but we're almost there. So, but yeah, that's it for today, which yeah. is lovely. Leave you uh, there. Fun. It was nice and chill. It was definitely a nice little podcast in between all this craziness. So I hope everyone else enjoyed it too. Yeah. And uh, fair warning, if the systematic reviews get more chaotic over the next couple of weeks, we, we could go anywhere. We, you could just have a completely nuts 15 minutes of us just talking absolute garbage because we've got no brain space yeah. or we're going to over intellectualize yeah. everything and uh you won't want to listen so we'll see could go anywhere at this point um it's russian roulette and we'll see where we go honestly <laughs> yes <laughs> oh i love it no all right well i hope everyone has a wonderful week and i hope you enjoyed email us or message us on instagram if you have any recommendations or you want to know anything else in detail. Thanks, crew. Peace out. Bye.